So the first change you'll see is when you hit the create test button. You now have two kinds of tests. One is performance test. It's no longer a JMeter test or a Torus test or whatever you used to have URL test. It's a performance test. Whatever you want to do in performance area will be behind this button. And you have the multi-test, which allows you to combine various performance tests together. Apart from that, we have API test, we have functional test, but it's out of the scope of this webinar. <clears throat> so if you remember the previous screen, it looks something like that. Many users, mainly new users, told us that it's quite hard to understand what's going on and where should I go first and what should I do. This new screen is much more streamlined. Just give this test name for name. In this area, you have the script upload. You can drag and drop or just upload your script. Also, you see here that we're validating your file. If you're loading a JMeter script, a Toro script, or whatever, we'll validate it. If there is any problem, we'll tell you here that you're missing a CSV file, you're missing some dependency, or in general, you have an error on line 32. If it's passed, it means it will run. We will try to identify the executor. In JMeter, it's easy, it's .jmx, but in some Java runners, it might be not that easy. So we'll try to identify and allow you to override it. After you finished with uploading your, your file, you can easily configure whatever you want to be the load. Let's say I want 2,000 users. I want them to run 60 minutes. It's a lot of users, so let's have 30 minutes ramp up. And something new in BlazeMeter is the ramp up steps. We won't just linearly upload your, your users. We'll do it in steps. So you'll have 200 users in this case, and then we'll stabilize it for three minutes, and then go to 400, stabilize it three minutes, etc. This will allow you to see how your system reacts to different um, views and then check it out better. If your script has um, some of this configuration and you don't want to override it, you can simply uncheck it. We will take it from the script. This script has 50, so we run 50. And then you can define how many engines you would like to see in the test. Each of them will have whatever you have in the script. One big change we have in this version is supporting multi geolocations. So you can easily change the geolocation. I don't want it to run from Virginia, but rather from Canada but I also want to have three locations. Simply add locations as many as you want. We'll try to automatically decide what the percentage of the traffic. If you want to do anything, we'll simply evenly divide it between the locations. But once you've changed something, when you enter a new location, we'll simply add it up so it will come up to 100%. So you can run the test. And again, easily you can decide I want this one to come from Google, etc. Underneath it, you can define failure criteria. Failure criteria is the way for us to help you understand fast if something went wrong. Let's say I want the failure criteria if the average response time of the whole test is greater than three seconds. You can decide to stop the test, or you can decide just to get warning. We'll see later in the report how it looks. One totally new thing we added here is the end user experience monitoring. JMeter tests are used to hit APIs. <clears throat> Whatever you configured in your JMeter will hit behind the scenes. What it will test, it will test how your APIs are working, probably your database, load balancer, etc. But you won't get a real understanding of what, what is happening to the GUI, to the user experience while this is happening. 
this is what we added here. We can easily define the URL you'd like us to hit. And we will periodically, throughout the whole test, hit it with a Selenium dedicated machine. Another thing you can see throughout this page is if you enter something you don't really understand, simply press the question mark. It will help, it will open the help with the right context. Below the end of user experience, we have the APM integration. You can integrate to whatever APM you're using and see what's happening behind the scenes. You can define Jamito properties, DNS override, network emulation, and all the good stuff we used to have. On the left side is the general information. Project name, the name of the test, if you want to add a description, you can add a description. Here you have what kind of test is it, JMeter, or if I would change it to Gatling, I would see Gatling, etc. And since we have an autosave, it will tell you when it was last saved. You can decide whether you want to get or not an email notification when the test is done. Run the test, of course, and also have a debug run. Debug run will use one engine, 10 VUs, and up to five minutes or 100 iterations. It will not calculate the failure criteria because the whole idea is to let you debug your test, to let you see that the test you're running is working as expected in the cloud and you don't need to configure anything or you didn't upload the wrong test. And instead of doing it live with 2,000 users and six total engines, do it for free, fast, and get a more robust logging. Here you have the duplicate test, delete, move, if you want to move it to other projects. And here is the rest of the summary of the test. It will be 2,000 users for 60 minutes, running from four locations at these percentiles. So let's just start this test. Let's go to the URL test. So if you remember, this is the URL we used to have. We were able to add URLs, put some HTTP headers, and then configure whether it's get or post. Basically hit your URLs. Um, very simple, kind of a smoke test. What we now have, apart from a very slick animation, is something much, much stronger. What we allow you to do today is create a real um, strong script. For example, I can put the URL here and then add assertions, add query parameters, headers, even extract something from the response to a variable that I can later use in addition of requests. So for example, I know that the body should contain this. Very easy to write. And behind the scenes, we'll create a regular expression for you and then assert that this actually uh, exists in the response. And I can add as many requests as I want and add to this post request um, the body with the key and the value. If I want, I can give this scenario a meaningful name. I can give a default address so that here I will only need to enter the remaining URL. And I can define a delay between requests so I won't suffocate my system. And below that, we have all the rest of the configurations we had in the script version. Same thing. Again, end user experience, failure criteria, load distribution, etc. Let's run this as well. As I mentioned before, we have Taurus. Taurus uses its own DSL, which is very simple and straightforward. Even if you don't know it, you can easily read it. And the executor will be Gatling. It will execute 
this scenario code existing. Concurrency will be 100 views with a ramp up of one minute, three ramp up steps, and the whole time will be five minutes. It will run from two locations if it's in the cloud, and it will run uh, Scala script, Gatling script, and when con connected to the cloud, it will use my account with my workspace and with a given test name. This is me running this test locally. I simply write BZT, the test name, it spins up a torus, and then start hitting whatever it was configured to hit and gather the data. In a few seconds, we start here seeing here graphs that represents the test results. Again, very easy, very fast. No need to be an expert on performance testing and understand whatever tools you need. If you have a script, very simple to write it, very simple to run it. But after you've checked it locally and saw that everything is working as planned, simply add here this cloud and it will spin up machines in the cloud. We'll start the test on Blazemeter. <clears throat> Once the data will get, we can easily see the data later on. Last thing before we drill down to the reports is the multi-test. What the multi-test allows you is to combine various tests into one single test that will run synchronously. And here you have the summary. It's like two scenarios. These are the names. It will run from one location, 30 minutes total with 80 views total. And this is what your traffic will look like. If you hover on one test, you'll see what, what is the part of the traffic coming from one test and the other will show you the other. And in addition, you can override the load configuration. You can say, okay, I want it to run from two locations and I want it to be 200 users because now I'm running a different scenario. And probably the duration, I need this to be 30 minutes, it ramp up of 10. Whatever you like, let's run this as well. And now let's go to some executions and see the reports. So this is the demo URL I've just uh, configured. As you can see, I have 1% errors. When I press the errors, I will go to the error log. And here I can try to examine what went wrong. So I did an assertion that count will appear nine times. Actually, it didn't find it. So either I misconfigured or, or my site has changed. I now have a valid error, so I can go to my code and try to understand what went wrong. And in the view, I had a bad request. This was intentionally because in order to get a view, you need to have some kind of cookie and I didn't configure it. Go to the demo test of the multi-location. Here we have 500 virtual users that are divided to four locations. Currently it shows everything, but if I go to a specific location, you can see that the number of views and the whole graph are changing. This allows you to easily slice and dice your results depending on the location you've ran the test. And once the multi-test will start, you will see how you can do the same thing with scenarios. In addition, one thing we've added to this um, version before, if you used to run uh, multiple thread groups inside a JMeter test, what we did is once you've override the configuration in the GUI, will evenly divide the override across the multiple thread groups. In V4, what we do is divide it proportionally. So the script we had here was four thread groups, 10, 20, 
30 and 40. In the request stats, what we can see that the hits per second, the number of samples is um, relatively in the same numbers to 10, 20, it's like one, two, three, and four. Need to improvement. Also, what we can see here is that, sorry, this is the test we've started from the CLI. As you can see, it's running, giving meaningful reports, and not just meaningful, but the same reports. So until now, we saw JMeter. This is a Gatling test that I ran from the CLI. I have the same timeline, the same request stats, arrows, logs, health engine, etc. I can go drill down to the KPIs in the same manner I do with every test in Blazemeter. And if we go back to the multi-test, one of the things you can see here is that you can you not only have the locations, you, only, you can also separate the runs regarding the scenarios. So this scenario looks like this, the other scenario will look like this. And here you can also divide per locations. It makes the drilling down much more meaningful and easier. <laughs>